All right, I'm gonna call the uh, meeting to order. It is uh, 6.32 on Tuesday, July 18th, Public Safety Building Committee meeting. Uh, I believe the sole purpose of this meeting is to continue the dialogue from our last meeting where we interviewed four uh, finalists for the position of owner's project manager. Uh, I think we were at different points in our level of opinion. Everyone's had about eight days to reflect on the information. And um, I think our goal tonight is to uh, advance a finalist uh, for a potential award by the Board of Selectmen tomorrow night. And I also think we should vote on a runner-up should negotiations fall through with that finalist. Um, unless anyone thinks differently, I don't think we need to rate a third and a fourth. I think we just have a finalist and a runner-up. Uh, so with that being said, I, I think what I would like to do is just literally go down the table um, here where everyone is at. Um, everyone kind of voiced an opinion last week, some I'll, I'll say more definitive than others, and see if that opinion leads us to a consensus or see if it needs uh, further discussion and vetting or if we have to maybe narrow the list down for further uh, conversation. So um, with that, Mr. Rooney, I'll start with you. Has uh, anything changed on, um, actually, before I do that, I would be remiss um, to not uh, acknowledge an email that we received from Vertex um, since the last meeting. Um, as you re can recall, um, one of our questions during that discussion was, um, they, had, they had two representatives here, uh, Mr. Heffernan was proposed as the project manager in their proposal and subsequently was the one that appeared before us um, with uh, Steve, who's also a resident of the town. Um, they have um, actually asked to swap project managers and have Steve be the um, lead project manager for, the, um, in, for our, our project if they were selected. And with Kevin supporting mainly on the um, beginning phase, um, mainly the pre-construction phase, which seems to be more um, in his wheelhouse. So they, they did submit a formal email to Mr. Purple asking um, that that change be made. Um, I just put that out there on the record um, that, that you know, they did send that email in. Um, you know, personally, I, I think any project team is open for negotiation depending on, on, on who we advance uh, to the BOS and assuming that they agree with our recommendation. I think that's part of a negotiation of, of who we work with. You know, I think we had a lot of talk about clerk of the works, but I think now project managers also, you know, potentially in play given various work assignments. So I figured I'd throw that out there. Before I turn it over to Mr. Rooney again, I just wanted to see if there's any questions on that particular matter. Okay, Mr. Rooney. Yeah, my, my position, or my uh, opinion remains the same. I would, uh, my number one would be Vertex. And I think the email even reinforces that in terms of Steve being the project manager, given his close ties to the community. And my uh, second uh, runner up, if you would, would be Lamoureux Pagano. Lamoureux Pagano. Uh, Mr. Wood. I will reiterate that. I'd like to stay the same as I was last week. My number one would be Vertex, and my second would be LPA. Um, the only thing I did think about with Vertex, I know they worked closely with uh, Dunham Sweeney or whatever they are now. And I just want to, sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes that's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. So I, I just want to put that out to the people, you know, where they've already worked closely. I don't want to worry about the uh, good old boy thing or anything like that where they've already have some past things. So that's my only concern with them. But I'd, I'm still sticking with uh, Vertex as my number one and LPA as my number two. Ms. Cook. So um, I'm just the reverse. So um, I would put LPA one and Vertex two. Um, I've gone back and forth to it. Hit. Um, I started the meeting last week with it being that way. Then by the end of it, I really had. Um, I mean, Vertex. You know, they were last, but we were tired, and they still they did such a good job with the presentation. It was such a well balanced team, where the other ones weren't so well balanced. However. Um, I go back to LPA because I really like Mary. Um, I think um, the fact that she came to that previous meeting had the um, um, 
smarts to do that, do a homework. She just seemed so competent. I think that the gentleman on both sides of her didn't help her. Um, the, the, the one on, the, on her, or my right, her left, um, you know, he seemed to um, want to do the project because he's a golfer. The one on the other side, I'm not sure um, what he would add to it. So I didn't think much of the two gentlemen on both sides, but I thought she was extremely competent. Um, I like the size of their firm better than I do Vertex. Um, I think that a smaller firm um, is going to have more incentive to, to, to do this job. They, they probably are hungrier. I think that in the end, if we need them to do some things that they didn't really plan on, that you've got a better shot at getting them to do it versus a bigger firm that's got a, um, I mean, for example, you know, if you work at a big firm, uh, a big four county firm, you got to account for your hours every single day, no matter what you did, at the end of the day, you got to put them all down, right? At a smaller firm, you've got some more flexibility, so I like the smaller firm. Um, and then third, and this is, this is very nuanced, um, and I, I've seen this a few times, not every time, but I like the idea of a female um, occupying that role because I think that she will, um, she won't have a tendency to get cozy with the contractor. Sometimes your project managers can do that. They don't always do it, but they can. Um, and I don't see someone like her doing, you don't see it with a woman like you would with a man. So um, I do like the idea of a female occupying that road to, to really keep their distance from the contractor, keep it totally objective and basically keep their feet to the fire. But I like Vertex a lot too, so um, I, I think that's probably um, where the vote's gonna go. So I like them both, but I, I'd still put um, LPA number one. Can I just add one thing you said, um, in terms of you seem to be selecting Lamar Pagano based on Mary, which I wholeheartedly agree with everything you said about her. Um, do you at all worry about hedging your bets on one person, just like? Well, I went back, after you said what you said a minute ago, I went back and it says, our project team will be, and so it says will be. It doesn't say this is what we're going to propose. It says will be. So you, I mean, that's what I am doing. So yes, I would worry about that. And let me add one more thing. I still like the idea of the architectural background being part of her. I like that. I know some people don't, um, but I like the fact that she understands the architectural business too, and can weigh in on that and really talk that language too. So I do like that as far as her background too. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Moorhead. Um. I wanted to sleep on it, but I could, and I'm, I'm very comfortable with both Vertex and LPA. Um, just having to put one above the other, I would go Vertex simply because um, Kevin, this is what he does. He's he's all public safety or police or fire. And uh, that's kind of when he won me over, I guess, during the interview was when he said, this is all I'm, all I do. Um, and I, I'm a fan of that because there there is a special, there is a specialty to that. And this is a very special building. Um, highly specialized that you can't just kind of uh, anybody who's a project manager can take the process through but if they're solely invested in police and fire um, I think that's a very good quality to have um, I could go either way but I'd put vertex above LPA Mr. Goodney. I, I would agree that we can't go go wrong with either one they both have uh, <clears throat> some distinct advantages much different advantages um, I mean, I like the fact that Vertex is smaller and, 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 and you know, the hometown, you know, would connection there. Um, I mentioned before he, he was present at meetings 10 years ago, although I haven't seen him at any of the, uh, you know, 40 odd meetings that we've had. I haven't seen his presence. Um, concerns with the, with a big company like Pagano, um, you know, you, you, you're concerned about their attention to, you know, the project. Um, are we going to be their best customer, you know, as I think brought up earlier uh, Sorry, in discussions? I, you said big company like Pagano. Do you mean Vertex? I mean, no, I mean Pagano. I'm, t I'm comparing the two. Pagano okay. smaller than Vertex. Well, I just like the way Pagano had their attention to detail with the presentation. Uh, they had, you know, our pictures and, and they had people at our meetings. Um, I think they're really going to... Uh, I just like their, their presentation and, and, and the dedication to the project and the fact that they have done public safety and golf courses. Um, so they're going to be, will be my first choice. Um, and, but I don't think we can go wrong with Vertex as well. Uh, they have a, you know, a, a good history. So they'll be my second choice. Mr. Lyons. 
Um, I'm still a big proponent of Dallas, um, but I did call references on uh, Vertex this week, and um, I'm going with Vertex for number one. I got some positive feedback. Uh, Dallas would be my second because I think they still have overwhelming experience in building public safety buildings. Just in terms of the references you talked to, what I mean, you were very clear on. Yeah, it's just um, one of the people I called said that. Uh, um, the Dallas is more of a estimating firm, where Vertex is more of a OPM firm. So I kind of swayed a little on that. Okay, and um, I remain where I was at the end of the last meeting. I think Vertex brings a very strong team. Should we happen to lose one of the members of that team, I still think that there's I'll call it backup, um, and I think that's the advantages of going with. A slightly larger firm. Uh, I, I can't say enough about Mary at Lamar Pagano. I think if, if she were um, in front of us, she would do an excellent job too. I just uh, do worry about the level of support uh, behind her. And I also do worry a little bit about um, the size of this project compared to other projects that they have worked on. Um, even though we are a small town, we obviously are writing a very large check for this facility given how long and overdue and the fact that we're doing two facilities and not one um, and so that's kind of what's swaying me towards um, vertex as opposed to Lamar Pagano but I, I will certainly uh, go on record supporting both of those firms um, and with Daedalus I, I they were my strong favorite coming into last week's meeting um, I just was very disappointed with the lack of understanding of our current project. I do think they are probably the most qualified um, to work on a project of this size and this complexity, but uh, just the lack of preparation just shows you maybe they're too big um, for a town like Southboro. So those are, those are my thoughts. Um, I'm hearing common themes of Vertex and Lamar Pagano. Um, while we don't have to have a unanimous uh, vote I think it certainly sends a strong message, you know, the more unified we are because all of us will be working together. So I don't know if there's any discussion that anyone wants to further have in terms of um, pitting the pros and cons um, of each against, you know, just so we can further weigh it out. If you think everything's been aired out, we can certainly um, listen to motions and, and discuss it that way. Um, I do want to make sure that both chiefs and the town administrator, um, your ex, ex officio members, um, as is at least Ms. Cook for now, um, while you don't have a vote, I think your opinion, and you will have to probably work with these folks just as much, if not more than us. Uh, if you have anything you, you think this committee has not thought about and in, in our deliberations, I think now is the time to, to raise any comments or concerns. Um, seeing shaking heads of no, so Mr. Goodney. I Can I ask you. one more question? Well, do we know why they changed their mind about putting Steve as a project manager versus Kevin? Uh, do, they, do you think that they did that because they thought that would be important to us? If you'd like, I can certainly read the email if that would help just to, to gain uh, insight. Uh, my, my generic answer before reading the email would be, um, I think they looked at their schedule again. I think they looked at, uh, they probably listened to how he spoke about his interaction on the Woodward School, Finn, et cetera, and just his capacity to understand the town better than someone outside. But um, this is from uh, John Lemieux, who was uh, the project executive that was not present that night. Um, he wrote, uh, Mark, hello again. First of all, my apologies for not being available last week. I would have loved to have been there. Second, I now had a chance to debrief with Kevin and Steve about the interview. After speaking with them, I would like to clarify our staffing for the project, as well as propose a change that I would like the committee to consider during its final deliberations tomorrow. As you know, when these RFQ responses are submitted, we invariably are dealing with the best information we have at that time. That information includes our current projects, pending projects, and new opportunities like yours. After reviewing the project again, as well as our current backlog and pending new projects, 
we would like to propose Steve Theron as the PM instead of Kevin Heffernan. Kevin would remain part of the team from a planning and constructability focus, but Steve would take on the more active role immediately. We did not initially propose Steve as a PM due to a commitment on a school project that was yet to be defined. As we are now three weeks post submission of our proposal to you, the timing of that school project is now better understood, resulting in an immediate availability for Steve in parentheticals and is an MSBA project with a long, long lead time. That would result in the staffing as follows. John Lemieux, project executive, heavily involved in planning through design and bidding, minimally involved through construction, but as needed, of course. His availability is available immediately. Steve Theron, project manager, involved in all phases of the project from planning through design, construction and closeout, available immediately. Kevin Heffernan, involved in design and constructability phases. Other items mentioned on the organizational chart remain unchanged. As you know, both Steve T. and Kevin have excellent public safety experience, but we feel that Steve's experience on Situate better mirrors what you are trying to build for Southboro. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks very much, John. Sorry, Mr. Goodney. I think it's important that we um, make things as, as unanimous as we can. As we can. Uh, I have no problem with Vertex, and I'd be more than happy to change my vote to uh, make them first. Was there anyone else? I'm not ignoring you, Ms. Cook, um, <laughs> but I guess as a, as a voting member um, that, that n needs any further conversation about this. Okay. Is there a motion from a member of the committee? Let's work. Let's do the finalist first. I make a motion to recommend Vertex to the selectmen as our first choice for OPM. Is there a second? I'll second that. Is there any conversation on that matter? All those in favor? Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Are there any motions regarding a follow-up for owner's project manager? So, I'm sorry, runner-up, not follow-up. I'll, I'll, make I'll, I'll make a motion that we uh, select LPA as our runner-up for OPM. Second. Mr. Wood seconds. Is there any discussion on Lamar Pagano as the runner-up choice for owner's project manager? I'd just like to field a question to Mr. Purple. Is this something that is a, a good idea, or how do you feel about having a backup? I don't think it's a bad idea. I mean, the committee is, is, uh, has set a meeting schedule beginning at the end of this month and then every other week thereafter for meetings. Um, you know, you can put two forward. Obviously, we're going to move forward um, with Vertex, and then if things fall through, um, the inability to get them under contract, then we can engage um, LPA. Um, it, it's not a bad idea, but it's not necessary for you to do that. It's, it's up to the committee how you want to proceed. If, if things do fall through with Vertex, do we have to have another meeting or can we do something tonight that automatically allows you to enter in bargaining with uh, the second? Well, by you putting this forward, I, you know, we're, we're going to let the four companies who came in an interview, we're going to let them know what the committee voted. Okay, this was the recommendation that was brought forward. You know, the, the selectmen assumably will ratify this tomorrow night, and then, you know, we'll engage Vertex in discussions. But obviously, Vertex is aware that if things don't go well, the committee's already identified LPA. You know, so if things, if we can't get it done with Vertex, we know who the next, we know who the next one is. Okay. So it, 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 it may add a little bit of um, pressure where needed you know, for Vertex, you know, to, to want to get this done. Because they know if not, LPA is probably getting the work. Okay, great. Is there any further discussion on that matter? All those in favor of Lamaro Pagano as the runner-up? So we have to have a motion for that. We already made a motion. 
right? Yep. Yeah. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Um, so procedurally, um, we have voted on our recommendation to the Board of Selectmen. Uh, they are meeting tomorrow night. Obviously, they were supposed to be meeting tonight. Um, I have business commitments out of town that I was not able to uh, change. Um, I did post a meeting for this committee. I do know there are many others that weren't around Wednesday night. Um, so what my recommendation would be that I would craft an email that goes to the selectmen either uh, late tonight, early tomorrow, uh, for them to at least ponder on all day. Uh, and should any committee member be present at the Board of Selectmen meeting and they have questions, they can certainly direct it to any or all of you. If we have a quorum, we're covered under open meeting law. Um, but really, the, the tone of my email was really going to be along the lines of, here's the process we took, you know, in terms of what we did to get from seven to four, why we brought four forward, um, what we did last week, and then obviously um, reference the discussion we had at the end of last meeting into the early part of this meeting, just so that they understand what we went through. Um, uh, some of them were, were present at our meetings and understand what we were doing, so I think if they were present or have watched the subsequent videotapes, they kind of have a record of that. But if there's any other items that you think are important for them to consider, um, I'd like to air that out now just so we have a consensus. Are, are the um, meeting minutes approved that they could review? And if, if not, we should maybe do that. So those would be at their... Yeah, I mean, we... So Mr. Lyons has sent around the meeting minutes from last week, um, and I know he's still you're still working through the vi the video. So I, I did he did share a draft with me um, of the initial the initial meeting minutes. Um, I'm trying to help him go through the video right. uh, just right. to make sure that everyone's comments because I think I don't know that we want to rush to approve a set of minutes that are are I don't want to call them incomplete, but th they would be incomplete if they don't show the pros and cons of why we brought all the, fir the firms that we brought forward forward and the ones that we left behind. Um, we obviously know what we did, but um, unfortunately, with, you know, my understanding is all that really matters is the written minutes, right. not necessarily the video if someone were to, were to go back. Um, certainly the video would be used, but I think we need to be careful not to rush to approval. So my thought would be, at our meeting on the 31st that we approve all meeting minutes that encompass this process to make sure that the whole process is accurately captured as opposed to kind of going systematically. I did have it on the agenda for tonight, but um, I, I just don't think it, it's wise and I think everyone needs to have a chance to read them in advance, not like try to flip through them. Um, so is that... Yeah, I understand that. I was just trying to make it easy for the selectmen if they want to reflect on the process. They could just go, okay, I read the minutes. They did A, B, C, and D. And, you know, and yeah, I, now they'll have to watch the video, I guess, if they really wanted to know exactly what happened. But Yeah, I mean, what, what I, you know, can also offer is, you know, to the extent that anyone's going to be present, you know, th there's an open mic, and I'm sure they'd be yeah. willing to hear. Um, but also to the extent that any individual selectman has a question, that they, they need answered kind of off the record so they don't, you know, yeah. that they can start to formulate their opinion. Mr. Purple was there. Yeah, too, so, so can, and I don't know if the chiefs will be there, but there, there's enough they can vouch. presence there. Uh, the one thing, so I guess, is there any other substance that you want conveyed to the, the Board of Selectmen other than just the process we went through, why, we, we're, why we're choosing Vertex and why uh, we're advancing Lamarro Pagano as the runner-up? Okay. Um, the other thing I, I did want uh, with consent of this committee was, um, I know we talked a little bit about um, who would be negotiating um, a contract with Vertex should the selectmen award that contract. Uh, I think it behooves us to vote tonight um, it, should it get kicked back to this committee that we have representatives lined up and that be outlined um, to the Board of Selectmen so that they know that come Thursday morning there are are people anxious and ready to to get to work with Vertex uh, to, to get to a contract obviously you got to get it through the, the appropriate channels of town council as well so uh, I don't know if there's anyone that would like to step forward and assist with that I have some strong opinions on who I'd like to see 
Um, but I don't know if there's any volunteers or, or thoughts from other committee members. I'd, I'd certainly be willing to throw my name in the hat for scope negotiations yeah. for OPM. I have some people I'd like to see, and I'm not nominating myself as one of them. I, I, I personally, I, I, Mr. Rooney, I know you do negotiations for a living. Ms. Cook, she's done a bunch, and I think the chair should be involved. That's that's my opinion. Uh, they have more experience than that. I don't know what 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 you guys' experience are with contract negotiations in the past, but uh, those would be be my recommendations if they wanted to do that. Sorry, I didn't mean to call you guys out, but I think you guys do a good job. So, I guess Mr. Rooney and Ms. Cook, would you be interested in us entertaining you as names with Mr. Moorhead, Mr. Lyons? Yes, for me. Yeah, if the committee wants me to, I would. Okay. Any? And you, as the chair, I think you should be part of it. Yeah. So, I guess I'll I'll make it easy on, on my part. I I think I'll take a back seat, just and just listen in if to the extent my schedule allows. Um, but I I don't want to be the, the the forefront of that negotiating team. Just. For, for many reasons, but um, I'm happy to listen in to the negotiations and make sure I understand um, what we're agreeing to from a scope, but um, I, I personally feel like Mr. Rooney has negotiated many things on behalf of the town, um, and I've heard great <coughs> things about, well, I'm not as familiar with Ms. Cook's experience, I've heard uh, great things about her work in, in that area, and just some of the comments that she's made in other meetings in terms of starting points for contracts and where to start, I mean, that sounds like <laughs> a really good start to the process. So um, that's who I would bring forward in terms of a negotiation because I think it's more of a contract as opposed to a, a scope discussion. I think all seven voting but eight members sitting here um, will have the option to vote on what if Mr. Rooney and Ms. Cook were, were brought forward, if what they bring forward um, and that's where, you know, Mr. Moorhead, your, your, your role as an architect, and you can say this is what I've seen on other things, et cetera, and it doesn't mean that there, there can't be reach in for guidance along the way. Um, and Mr. Lyons, likewise, I don't know what your involvement was in Weston um, in terms of that negotiation, but I think there's a wealth of knowledge at the table, and I don't think we can go I wrong. Can, can I just clarify? I just, that's all I'm interested in is... Um, Clarifying the scope of work, I'm, I'm less interested in the negotiations, so I'm, I'll, I'll take a back seat just as long as I can see what we're agreeing to, with, with our OPM. That's that's more my interest in in understanding what we're asking them. So, Mr. Rooney, I, I think it would be important um, having negotiated a number of issues with, on behalf of the town to have Mr. Purple also involved intimately with the negotiation team um, for this OPM contract, just based upon his familiarity with the subject matter, but also having seen him in action in negotiations, I think it would be an asset for this committee to utilize his services in that regard. Absolutely. Uh, I was I probably remiss, I, I just, just assumed. assumed. I just assumed. So did I, I just assumed that he <laughs> would be part of it. Mr. Purple. I just want to clarify something. I think Michael had, had brought it up, um, but this isn't simply just the terms of the contract. This is a scope discussion as well. Um, I think the negotiating team needs to determine what services that you're going to be looking for. Um, so it's, it is scope, you know, so that's something that I just want to make sure that was understood. This is scope as well as you know, the language piece is kind of secondary. You need to focus on what services you want the OPM to provide. I mean, I would assume town council will assist with the language. Absolutely. So that, that, that's the back end of the process. I think, you know, the understanding is, you know, the, the committee will need to determine, you know, timeline. We'll need to determine, you know, scope and things like that. And then, you know, and then we can work on, you know, the language pieces. But I think it's important to understand what we're going to be asking them to do first. 
Mr. Rooney? Yeah, in terms of the scope, Mark, I, I, obviously we are not creating the wheel here. Other towns have engaged in these contracts with regards to the scope of work for OPMs. Can we get copies of those types of uh, documents so that this committee as a whole can determine exactly what the scope is we want to do for this project rather sure. than trying to sure. craft it from and, and I've And I've already reached out to some communities to get an idea of what those look like. But I think if you look in some of the responses that the OPM submitted, you'll see uh, in some communities, you know, they may have provided clerk of the works. In right. some, they may have just been the oversight. Right. In some, they just handled the bidding and the estimating. So uh, in some of the OPMs actually uh, did work on the same projects for little pieces. So you're gonna have to determine, like I said, do you want somebody to do, for example, to provide the clerk of the work services, or do you want to do that separately? Do you want to you know, take these pieces and either do them in-house, um, which you know, I don't know that I recommend, um, you know, given the level of staffing that we have, uh, or do you want to do them you know, all with one company? Do you want to you know, do them separately? So those are discussions I think you're gonna to need to you know, to have and, and things you'll need to think about and determine where the value is. Should we do those tonight? I don't think you have the menu tonight, right? Of, of yeah. what they they would propose for a project of this size, right? right. I think we well, should. I think we, should, we could probably determine whether we're going to have them provide clerk of the works and project manager. We're going to go, or we're going to farm out to somebody else. I think it helps you. Yeah, I think I think it helps if you've got a dollar figure attached to that too. You know, here's what they're going to be here's what they're going to charge to do clerk of the work services and you know, we did a little bit of research and if we independently do that it might be this. We're not going to save a whole lot. We'll keep it with the same team. So I, I really think, you know, you it's hard to make that decision independent of of of, of the uh, not having the dollar figures. Okay. Yeah, I, I think it would also be beneficial to get a proposal from Vertex as to what they would propose the scope of work would be and costs associated with that and what's worked best for them and and then we can try to refine it for our taste for our town I agree I think it's easier for you to get an all-in yep here's everything and break it all out into the pieces and if the committee wants to give me some type of direction on that tonight I can reach out to Vertex and I can say you know, uh, this is going to the select, well, I'll do it after the selectmen ratified, but I can say here is a selectmen have chosen uh, to move forward with you on a contract. Here's what the committee would like. And they want this information ahead of time to be able to review it so that the first time you sit down with them, it's not trying to understand what's just been put in front of you. And, and I would assume anyone that has already come before us, any of those firms already have an idea of what what this project is going to look like from a fee perspective in terms of all in. I, I like the menu approach. Um, so any, you know, whoever our chosen few are, um, as a committee member, I would like to see kind of the full menu and then we, we can pull it back from there in terms of what discussion and maybe it involves having, um, if it's vertex, you know, the selectmen ratify, having them come to the meeting, explain it, and then we can kind of, you know, have our deliberations amongst that. But, I think we all know time is also um, not in our favor in terms of we want to keep advancing the ball here. So I do think that, you know, whoever we select, we would need some sort of commitment that the next seven to 14 days, you, you have some flexibility in the schedule to sit down um, with the chosen firm. Because I think, quite honestly, that would be a non-starter in terms of, uh, you know, we'd be delayed further. So I don't know if there's anyone that has schedule capacity issues that wants to take themselves out of the discussion. I, the schedule would push me further back in the order of things. Again, uh, I'm just interested in seeing the scope of work less than negotiations. But they, they've kind of already given us their menu of what they could give us. Mm -hmm. And I'd, I'd suggest that we propose to them, say, tell us what you think is appropriate for our project. Because these might be all the things that they can offer, but we may not need, you know, a few of these. So I'd be a bigger fan of saying, "Hey, Vertex, what do you, what is your idea of the scope of work for what you would provide?" And then that's our that's our starting menu. And then say, "Hey, what else can go on there? What what other items can you give us?" Um, because again, some of these things might not be um, might not be necessary for us. 
and they've, already, they've, they've both laid it out there already. Um, but I think that it'd be better for them to tell us what's appropriate for our, our town. And I think that's what they may do is they may say, here is our, here's our price and it includes these things. And then there are these other things that you can add in as well. And then it, you know, it's whether or not the committee will agree with the base items or whether you want to parse out some of those. And then it's a question, you know, to Pete's point that do you want to add in these other pieces? I, I think the big one that could be added in, um, you remember Daedalus made a, um, big deal about they've got an in-house estimator, none of the rest of them did, but the rest of them basically would sub it out if you wanted to have an estimator too. So I think that's the um, add-on that we've got to decide we want to do or not. The rest of it I think um, you're going to want to do. I don't think you want to use, I mean, you suggested we're going to use somebody inside the townhouse to do some of this? No, okay. no, I'm, I'm not well, suggesting. I thought you meant, okay, so I'm I not suggesting, but all I'm saying is when I looked at some of the other OPM proposals, there were other services that, you know, there, there were kind of things that were done in-house or things that were done not by the company. And you could, you could hire um, Deadless, uh, you know, for the, you know, approach them to do the estimating. You know, uh, like I said, there, there, are, there, there are things that you can do, you know, in that regard. You could parse some of that to Lamarro Pagano if you wanted to. Um, but not to confuse the issue further. Yeah. Um, can, I have, I have, can I have one more comment? Okay. Um, we also have a budget number in our hold already. Which so is? Approximately 525,000. So we have something that we're working towards. Yeah, and I... I public number, yeah, it, the, the number's been sitting out on the internet since February. Uh, I guess what I would say is um, there are many decisions we're going to make along the way. Um, this decision in terms of the company that we're bringing forward and ultimately the, the contract that we negotiate, this is not something you, you go for absolute bare, bottom of the barrel services, right? You know, there are eyes and ears and they're the ones that are gonna make sure that there's, you know, eight, eight things that come into the site, but really we got billed for 10. You know, that, that's where you find the savings. So I, I think, you know, any negotiation team that goes forward should be looking at a, at a fair deal for both parties. Obviously, we're acting in the best interest in town of Southboro, but longer term, these companies are going to be acting in our best interests um, as taxpayers as well. Versus every every other relationship we're going to have is very one sided. <laughs> so I don't know if there's any sort of consensus that's been reached after this discussion. I think the important thing to remember is. All voting members will have a say in terms of what we bring forward to the selectmen in terms of what recommendations we have for a contract after hearing. But I do think there's just some background discussions that need to, to happen without you know, a full room. So is the thought to have Mr. Purple reach out to Vertex and get from them their proposal as to what they would uh, proposed to be the scope of work and then whomever the negotiating team is we can then talk or that they can then talk to vertex about that and then bring it back to the full committee to move forward thereafter yes with a, a very aggressive but I'm hoping attainable goal if we can do that for July 31st that's our only agenda topic at this point I'm not sure if it's attainable I think we won't know until contact is made on Thursday morning but I think that should be the, at least the goal that is set out here so that we can then proceed right to the BOS if we can come to some sort of agreement. Who computed the 525 that's in the um, budget? So the architect did that as a um, standing working percentage. I forget the exact percentage of, of the overall hard costs, mm -hmm. um, but it was a standard percentage is how they had been estimating it. So if you kind of look at our budgetary comparison every time it was the same percentage of the hard costs. So two and a half percent or so. Yeah, it's about that, yeah. I've got right. time, do you have time? Yeah, so, so I, I would like to have someone bring forward a motion for, I think we should nominate two members at this table to work in conjunction with Mr. Purple, town council, um, to bring forward, you know, a, a presentation to us 
that they've kind of helped to vet and sanitize with Vertex ahead of time. I'll, I'll make a motion that Mr. Rooney and Ms. Cook um, be the negotiating team in conjunction with Mr. Purple. Is there a second for I'll discussion? And no disrespect to anybody else on the board, I think everybody would do a great job. I just wanted to put that out there. John, I think you guys are good, and Michael too. I didn't mean any disrespect when I brought up them. Any further thoughts, discussion on that matter? All right, all those in favor? Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Um, I would obviously strongly encourage each of you to the extent that you feel like you need a lifeline from the various expertise of the other committee members, don't be afraid to, to reach in to, to vet one-on-one -on -one ahead of it. I think the more streamlined any proposals we have that come before us, the better. Um, with that, th there's one other thing I just wanted to just make sure everyone was aware of is um, there have been multiple vendors that have contacted Mr. Purple about just kind of the process, those that have fallen out um, along the way um, have contacted asking just for general feedback on why they weren't chosen, et cetera. Obviously, all of the materials that we have used to vet our process other than the videos are not um, out in the public at this point. Um, but just two reminders is one, all your evaluation sheets should now be into Mr. Purple um, of how you've vetted all seven. Um, in two, I did field one call from one of the um, project managers of the firms that we didn't advance to the final round of four, and I offered to give him my opinion only. Um, and he was going to wait till the process concluded to see whether I, I needed to get the remaining um, members' opinion. Um, they were working on some other proposals and wanted just some general feedback of, of why they weren't brought forward. So I provided that as an individual perspective. Um, it was one of the firms that we actually did not um, spend a ton of time talking about because none of the seven members brought them forward for an interview. So I just I, I feel it's important to get that out there. You know that that conversation occurred. Um, I thought it was the right thing to do to help them understand, at least from my perspective, why I didn't vote for them. But there may be more requests coming like that that we may just have to to vet. And it goes to the the, the comment Pete had on the minutes. I think. Our minutes need to be crystal clear in the process because I think we ran an incredibly fair and thorough process. We didn't rush to any decisions, but at the same time, we need to, to move forward with this. Are there any other topics for discussion tonight? I, ju I just wanted to clarify that clerk of the works, um, and, and I don't know if I even understand it wholly, but it's my understanding under that chapter 149, the clerk of the works can actually be another layer of or another point of view that the town can take and they can hire somebody else independent of the project manager. I don't really have a feeling one way or the other, but if people do that are more experienced in that field, that maybe we can make that decision tonight and give the selectmen and Mr. Purple some kind of guidance and that we definitely want them to be together or we don't care if they're together or we definitely want them to be a separate to try and streamline things. I would suggest waiting to the 31st and letting us um, include that as far as the reasons pro and con of doing that. I know what I think, but um, rather than put one opinion, I, I, I think if you let us meet and, and explain why we think it should either be separate or part of <coughs> the Vertex team, I think it would be clear as to... I mean, I, I'm interested in what you think. <coughs> maybe we all have the same thought, and if we all can agree right now, we can we can send that message and you know expedite the process. Well, what do you think is going to be expedited though by that? Well, I just don't want in the, all of a sudden to say, well, what do we want to do about a, a clerk of the works, and then we have to now interview people and go through all that. Well, clerk start. of the works, we don't need until the spring, right? Clerk of the works, like pretty much, assuming we're we're in shovels in the ground in April. Yeah, I'm not. I guess I'm not sure what making it, taking any action on that. I, I personally do think I need a little more education okay. on that topic of pros and cons of taking that approach. Um, I don't know um, that we gain anything by making a decision tonight. Okay. 
I don't know if anyone, John, you've been through it. I don't yeah. know if you do the same. My experience is the same company, uh, Clerk of the Works, worked out great. Um, they worked in hand in hand, shared all the material, and when we needed reports, they got them to us in a timely fashion. It was a great experience. So the Clerk of the Works and the OPM works for the same firm? Yes. Okay. okay. As long as there's no rush on it, it's not going to slow anything up. Mm -hmm. I'm fine for waiting. Mr. Rooney? I, I would assume that would be part of our discussion with this, the OPM and getting their proposal as to the clerk of the works because if I recall correctly, one of the strengths that we heard back from the references for this particular company was their on-site clerk of the works management. So maybe I think, I think it's premature to try to divorce that from the, the <coughs> OPM process that we're going to go through, hopefully and get tied up prior to July 31st. Any further discussion? Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Adjourned.